Hello and welcome back to part two. Uh, solving quadratics by factoring, and here we go. Um, on the back side now, we're going to have to do some factoring here, but you saw how simple it was when we understand the zero product property. Something has to be zero to get zero when you multiply. So all we have to do is figure out what those values are, and it's really pretty simple. Um, so let's take a look at this first example on the back, which actually comes from your book on page 569, solve this by factoring. So if you would copy it, recopy it in the middle here, and let's talk about it. We have a, uh, x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to zero. All right, and the first condition that you have to check is that it must be equal to zero. Okay, right there. If that's not equal to zero, you have to make it equal to zero. Okay, we'll see that in the second one right there. All right, the next thing is we have to factor the trinomial. Okay, well this is from chapter eight. You have to know how to do that. I mean, that's for the hard part of this class is you, you have to remember that stuff that we did in the previous, previous chapters. So to factor this, Here's how we did it. We considered the factors of C, which in this case were 15. It's positive 15. I didn't mean to make that mark there. Uh, there we go. Factors of 15 that sum to 8. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought we did A times C. What we did, but, but A is equal to 1, so that's 15. So we're still doing that. And it's easy enough, we don't have to do the box for this one, right? So if we find those factors that sum to 15, well, the factors are 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15, and they add to 8. So we have what we want. We have the factors. So now let me mention that, that these are the factors, not the solution, okay? These are the factors, not solutions. And... You need to know the difference between those two things. The factors are the things that will multiply back to that trinomial. The solutions are the values of y, which is this. This is y right here. y is 0. We want to know what is x when y is 0. Okay, so that's what you're finding here. So if I now factor this, I found my factors of 5 and 3. So remember how that works? That would be x plus 5 times x plus 3. That is equal to zero. All right, well, it's not the solution. Now we can use the zero product, right? That's like A, that's like B. Do your little squiggle line. We want to know if x plus 5 is zero. What is the value of x? Subtract 5, x is negative 5. x plus 3 is zero. So x would be negative 3. Okay, so the solutions are... x equals negative 5 and negative 3. So those are the y-intercepts, I'm sorry, the x-intercepts, because that's where y is 0. And there's your solution. Okay, let's go to the last problem in your notes here and wrap this thing up. All right, we've got a lot of things happening here in this problem. So we're going to solve this by factoring, just like the previous problem on your page. And we have now 4x squared. Recopy the problem first, minus 21x equals 18. All right, so first thing we have to do, set this equal to zero. That's huge. You have to do that first. It goes back to that standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So to do that, you're going to subtract 18 from each side. Now when I do this, notice that this does not have a, a like term on the left hand side. So we now have 4x squared minus 21x minus 18 is equal to zero. All right now I don't think I said this, but you do need to put a, a line break between these problems to kind of separate them. There, I know this, your page has a problem right up in front of it. Um, so you're gonna have to try to squeeze in my notes here. Okay, well now you have to factor this. Okay, now do you remember the problem we ran into? You got all these possible factors of 4, 1, 4, 2, 2. All the possible factors of 18, 1, 18, 2, 9, 3, 6, 
you've got to find that combination. So the way that we did that, and which many of you liked, was to use the box to factor. So that's what I'm going to show in the video. You could use the other method that we learned out of the book, but the bottom line is we've got to, we've got to get this thing factored. All right, so review the box. We take A times C, which is 4 times negative 18, and that is equal to negative 72. And we want to know what, what factors of negative 72 equal B, which is negative 21. Okay, so I went ahead and worked these through. You can try it through. It's not 172. Um, it's not 236. I don't think it works. That doesn't work. But then I came across negative 24, 3. Negative 24 times 3 is negative 72. And if I add negative 24 plus 3, I do get negative 21. So I'm happy. Here are my factors. These two factors right here. So we're going to make the box now. And do you remember how this works? All right, A goes here, which is 4x squared. C goes over here, which is negative 18. And then the factors go over here, negative 24, x, and 3x. And now we just plug them in. We've got 4x here, and we've got uh, 1x here. 1 times 4, because it has to be that way. And then negative 6 would go here. And then 3 would go there. So when we crisscross, the factors are uh, 4x minus 3. And x minus 6. That all equals 0. There, now you've, now you've factored this quadratic. And we can solve it by making... E is the zero product property. 4x minus 3 is equal to zero. Add 3 to both sides. Divide by 4. Sorry about that. x is supposed to equal 3 fourths. Again, much easier than trying to graph that. That's just regular x. I kind of messed up my x there. That's x. Okay. And this one, x minus 6 is zero. Add 6, you get x equals 6. So those are the solutions. 3 fourths and 6. So again, if we were to graph that, those would be your two x-intercepts. And the vertex would be uh, halfway between those two points there. So that's it. You have to be able to factor. So factor away and uh, solving is simple once you can factor it. See you soon. Bye.